When did you see your first Christmas tree this year? First Sunday of Advent? Middle of November? Was it before that? October, maybe? It's my imagination. Or did trees start appearing earlier this year as people looked for a little bit of Christmas cheer to break the routine? For Mark, the beginning of God's news doesn't start with shepherds, or stars, or kings, nor with trees. It starts with God's promise. And the beginning of the fulfillment of that promise is the appearance of John the Baptist. The beginning of the good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is written in the book of the prophet Isaiah, look, I'm going to send my messenger before you. He will prepare your way. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare a way for the Lord, make his paths straight. And so it was that John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. All Judea and all the people of Jerusalem made their way to him. And as they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, they confessed their sins. John wore a garment of camel skin and he lived on locusts and wild honey. In the course of his preaching, he said, someone is following me, someone who is more powerful than I am, and I am not fit to kneel down and undo the strap of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. As once he did on the banks of the Jordan, the Baptist calls to us to prepare a way for the Lord. And that Preparation has nothing to do with trees. I know Christmas trees and tinsel and turkey, uh, they've all become a part of how we celebrate Christmas. And, and they're all good things, getting together with friends and family. They're good things to do. But they can become distractions too from the message at the heart of Christmas, if we let them. You know, every year we get to the start of Advent and I promised myself that this year I'm going to get to, uh, to Christmas Eve and I'm still going to have the Baptist's cry ringing in my ears, prepare a way for the Lord. And every year I fail. Every year the, the pressures of Christmas mount. Oh, writing cards posting cards two days after the last posting date, wrapping presents on Christmas Eve to deliver on Christmas Day, putting Christmas decorations up after Christmas, just before friends come over and visit. You know, it seems to me that the closer Christmas gets and the busier time gets, the first thing to go is the spiritual. Every year I promise myself, that this year I'm going to take some time, make some time to reflect on the promise of Isaiah. And every year I fail. Console my people, console them, says your God. Speak to the heart of Jerusalem and call to her. That her time of service is ended, that her sin is atoned for, that she has received from the hand of the Lord double punishment for all her crimes. A voice cries, prepare in the wilderness a way for the Lord. Make a straight highway for our God across the desert. Let every valley be filled in, every mountain and hill laid low. Let every cliff become a plain and the ridges a valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all mankind shall see it. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up on a high mountain, joyful messenger of Zion. Shout with a loud voice, joyful messenger of Jerusalem. Shout without fear. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. Here is the Lord coming with power, his arm subduing all things under him. The prize of his victory is with him. His trophies all go before him. He is like a shepherd feeding his flock, gathering lambs in his arms, holding them against his breast and leading to their rest, the mother ewes. Maybe not being able to do so much of the usual Christmas stuff this year, 
there will be a better chance of celebrating the simple, peaceful joy of the coming of God's promise.